Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Her Game podcast, the official podcast of the Women's Premier Soccer League, the largest and longest active women's soccer league in the entire world. I'm Jeremy McPeak. I'm the social media director for the WPSL. And just to give you a little bit of background on myself, I've worked in uh, the sports business for more than 25 years now, the NBA, the WNBA, a little bit of the NFL, uh, XFL. But in terms of soccer, um, I never played myself. I'll have to admit that up front. But uh, I love the game. I got a chance to coach my daughter's soccer team for a number of years while she was growing up. One of the, my favorite things I've ever done. And I got a chance to work with the NWSL, help develop their social media strategy for about a year uh, before joining the WPSL, which I've been with now for three years. But I'm most excited to introduce the official host of the Her Game podcast. She is the communications director, as well as the graphic designer. She does all kinds of stuff. And now she's our new podcast host, Nicole Singleton. Nicole, how are you? Hey, Jeremy. Yeah, doing good. I'm excited to get this podcast going. How's it feel? It's our first ever episode. We've been talking about this for more than a year, I think. I know. It's exciting. It's exciting. Talk about uh, Her Game. That's the name of the podcast, but it's also the slogan for the league itself. What does that slogan mean to you and, and to the WPSL? Well, you know, the, the WPSL, it's, it's a great platform for amateur players to continue um, their playing careers and to take the next step. We have a lot of uh, collegiate athletes that play in between their collegiate seasons. And then we also have players who have maybe graduated and out of out of their collegiate years um, a few seasons and it's just not ready to hang hang the cleats up yet and want to take that to the next level so with her game we really want to promote these players and give them opportunities to succeed on the field and give them you know more ways to grow as a player and see if they can take that next step absolutely and her game of course is for the podcast itself, we want to promote the players. We want to promote the league. We want to promote the women's game um, of soccer. And and for the WPSL, this is going to be our 23rd season. Um, two clubs have been with us all 23 years. You know who those are, Nicole? I do. I or, do. Throwing they a trivia are... question at you right here in episode one. They are um, the California Storm and the San Francisco Nighthawks. Okay. You got it. I'm impressed. Not, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Got to give a shout out to Jamie with the Storm and Jill with the Nighthawks, um, two of our uh, big advocates in the league. They've been with the league a long time, big supporters of the league, uh, as well as us in our roles. So uh, I want to give them a shout out, and I'm sure we'll try to get them on the uh, podcast here at some point as well. Um, but the uh, the season is about to kick off this weekend. Uh, kind of crazy to think it's been, what is it, 21, 22 months since our last uh, match in the WPSL, since we had our WPSL championship in 2019? I know, and it's just a few days away now. It almost, it almost felt like it, it was never going to get here, and now and now right. here we are. It's been a long 20, <laughs> 21, 22 months without, uh, without soccer. Yes, and we will have five conferences kick off this weekend um, with the opening game coming Friday afternoon with the Independent Central hosting the Charlotte Eagles. And, At um, Manchester Meadows. Yes, yes. Love, love the name of that venue. And then we will have double headers on Saturday and Sunday um, to round out the opening weekend for the season. Absolutely. And fans, you guys can uh, take a look at my Kuju. It's our uh, official league streaming partner, and uh, you can take a look there to see if some of those matches will be streamed live. And if they won't be live, they will be uh, uh, on demand available after the fact. Uh, each team is, is going to be required to post their games on my Kuju this year. So um, a lot more WPSL action for you to watch there on, uh, our, again, our great partner, my Kuju. So excited about that. Um, let's talk about the league itself this year. It's bigger than ever. I think we have uh, 136 active teams. Is that right? We do. Yes, we do. And then we had the largest expansion class since 2016, I believe. Um, so a lot of new new teams coming in for 2021. And what's interesting, Jeremy, is we actually have an, an additional little over 20 teams that joined ahead of the 2020 season and were unable to play their first season because of the right. uh, pandemic and the canceled season that hit the sports um, around the world. So we'll actually see almost 50 new teams competing this year. 
That's crazy. I do feel like uh, there for a few months, every other day we were announcing a new club. Um, so we, we are growing fast. It's exciting to see. Talk about some of the markets um, that uh, the new new teams are going to be in. Yeah, we we grew tre tremendously in the East region. We have massive growth out there. Um, a new market being in Manchester, Vermont, with the Vermont Fusion um, joining yeah. us. And then we have uh, just an abundance in the New York, New Jersey region, and then spread out, you know, to the West Coast. So. Um, a lot of growth around around the league this year. Absolutely, I, mean, I was excited that we also added a, uh, a NWSL reserve team. We did, yes, Gotham FC, um, formerly the Sky Blue FC. They they did their rebranding and they announced that they will have their reserve teams with us, and they will be joining um, a, a secondary NWSL uh, team, Chicago Red Stars. Right. So we will have two reserve teams from the NWSL competing this year, which is yeah, exciting. I wouldn't be surprised if we have more in the, the near future as well. And of course, the Gotham FC, they were in the uh, NWSL's Challenge Cup this past weekend. They were with the Portland Thorns. And I believe we saw um, about 18 former WPSL players um, in that game. Pretty amazing to see that uh, and exciting to, to know that that our league is really helping players um, get to that next level. Yeah. And what's what's more interesting is almost half of that number. They came from the last three seasons of the WPSL. So fairly recent new talent um, taking the next leap to the professional level. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we talked about the uh, the new expansion teams this year. We're going to be talking to one of those in the second half of our podcast. We're going to be talking to the leadership group. Um, we have three different guests lined up. Our first three guests ever on the Her Game podcast from the Fox Soccer Academy. I keep wanting to say Fox Sports Academy, the Fox Soccer Academy uh, based in New York, uh, Warwick, New York. And uh, they will be joining us here in the second half of the podcast. So stay tuned for that. You guys are going to enjoy that conversation, I'm sure. Uh, but in addition to all of our expansion teams, Nicole, we also expanded with an entirely new league. Right. Yeah, we just we grew at a whole nother level. Um, and we have the U21 league. And for the first season, we have almost 40 teams wow. playing that will compete in this um, across 30 markets in 13 states. We'll have seven conferences. So a lot of a lot of growth within that and that's inaugural season as a league so it's it's going to be exciting to see the the younger talents taking the field talk about why uh why we decided to launch the wpsl u21 league why do you think that's important for for our league well um as i as i mentioned earlier the um wpsl you know our main goal is to provide you know, ample opportunities for players to continue growing and competing um, at the elite level to continue taking their game um, to the next level, wherever that may be. Yeah. So with U21, that's just an additional opportunity and platform for younger talent to play at a high caliber competition to grow and then take the next leap to the senior league within the WPSL and then, you know, grow into their collegiate season. So it's just creating more opportunities for our players to advance. Absolutely. And I know we've got eight teams in California, I believe, 11 teams in the uh, Metropolitan Conference. Disappointed there's not a team in Arizona in the U21 league. So I may have to uh, round up some people to try and uh, start that. Uh, well, you'll, they, <laughs> you'll have to launch that one for us. Yeah, yeah I'll see what <laughs> I can do. But at least we've got a couple of the WPSL team. So I'm excited about that. And I'm going to be going out to some of those, some of those matches, shooting photos and stuff for social media myself. Uh, but I know that we've got, um, I think you said 40 teams in the U21, correct? Yes, yes. And then I believe we have another 15 or 20 who have already committed for next year, a year from now. They weren't quite ready to start um, this season. Um, you know, we, that, that uh, U21 league here starts in mid-May. Um, so any day now, but um, we'll have another 15 or 20 teams at, at very minimum a year from now. So we'll be jumping to 55 to 60 uh, at a minimum. And I'm guessing we'll see a lot more. So pretty exciting to see see that league growing as well. Absolutely. Yes, it was. We saw tremendous um, response when we, we we rolled that league out. So to have enough to start even, you know, on future seasons is is huge. 
And we've got even more exciting big news coming for the WPSL, but that'll just have to be a little tease for now. We're going to save that for uh, future podcasts to talk about future press releases, uh, future updates on the website and social media posts. And speaking of social media, be sure to follow the WPSL on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, as we're going to be posting content all season long from across the country, from both leagues, the WPSL as well as the uh, WPSL U21 League. So uh, follow us there, and please send us a message. Send us a tweet. Leave us a comment. Send us a direct message. Let us know what you want to see us talk about, what you want to hear us talk about here on the Her Game podcast, and who you would like to see us interview on upcoming episodes. We've already got some big guests lined up. Uh, which we'll be announcing here shortly and excited to have them on. But but first, Nicole, let's head to our second half with our interviews with the Fox Soccer Academy. Let's do it. Okay, we're going to kick off the second half of our brand new podcast with some very special guests from the Fox Soccer Academy in Warwick, New York, one of our expansion teams for 2021. Guys, we are so excited that you are joining us today. Our first ever podcast. So you are our first three guests that we ever had here on the uh, Her Game podcast. Thanks for having us. What an honor that is. <laughs> well, Christian, you. really appreciate you, especially because it's 10 p.m., I believe, right now over in, uh, over in the U.K. where you're joining us. So thank you for staying up late with us. Well, well, I'm living on the New York time zone, so all good. Okay, good deal. So it's a, just to formally introduce each of you, uh, we've got Christian Fuchs, the founder of Fox Soccer Academy and a current player with Leicester City in the uh, English Premier League. Um, Scott Goodman, who is the Fox Soccer Academy's Director of Operations, and uh, Alex Many, who is the uh, Assistant Director of Coaching and the Head Coach for the new WPSL team. Um, again, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Really excited to have you. Um, could you, each of you maybe just for 30 seconds or a minute, just kind of give us a little bit of your personal soccer history background. Talk about uh, how you got into the game and kind of what your role is today with Fox Soccer Academy. Alex, you can start. You can kick us off. Awesome. So uh, as a young player, I kind of started playing just in my hometown and slowly grew up um, playing different club teams, different little things. And then I got an opportunity to play in England at a very young age. So I went over and played with West Ham Academy for a few seasons. Um, so that's kind of where I got my hunger and bite for soccer. And then that slowly grew into coaching. And then later in my career, um, I recently got back from Germany where I got my UEFA B license. So that's kind of where I've been starting and kind of the building blocks of where I'm at right now. Awesome. So I got my start. Uh, I've been I've been working in soccer in a variety of, of uh, positions. I was a part owner of the Hampton Roads Mariners back in the old A League, back when uh, soccer was a little bit more wild, wild west here in the <laughs> United States. Uh, I've been an assistant coach at the University of Albany. And uh, I've coached at the high school level and the youth, youth level as well. So I, I've got a large background. Awesome. The, 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 the question is, did you ever play yourself? Oh, that's a secret. I can't tell you. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Um, same with Alex. Started started play football very early ages. I think my parents told me that my first word that I ever said was ball. So kind of, kind of worked out very well. Um, Played in local teams. I've been uh, called up for the first time for, for an international experience in the was it under 17 national team, still playing for a local team. So that was kind of a, a good push in my career. Early doors, uh, signed my first pro deal uh, by the age of 17 as well. And uh, ever since it, it, it was a great journey so far. Um, <laughs> 18 years now as a, as a professional uh, in Austria, Germany, and, and England. Um, I think everybody knows the, 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 the fairy tale story with, with Leicester City um, winning the Premier League 5,000 to 1 odds. So, yeah, it has been um, good so far. Uh, I, I'm not complaining. Um, but, you know, the, the other passion to, to, my, to my job is Fox Hockey Academy to give back to young players, but also to, to more established players, because what I've experienced now under Brendan Rogers was that you can always learn. So there's, there's never a stop to that. And that's what we are trying to achieve with Fox Soccer. Absolutely. Awesome. So Christian, you've already kind of touched on it, but as the founder of Fox Soccer Academy, how did, tell us how all that came about originally. How did the, the idea spark and get, get started? 
we had a big vision. No, jokes aside, it was very simple. My son was signed up to, to, to summer camp or to a program in, in New York. And I, all I asked was uh, my wife, who's running the business for me in the, in the US, uh, how is it doing? What is it doing? Is it enjoying it? And what she told me was kind of frustrating because all he did was dancing around with his, with his lunchbox. And um, it, it upset me that, that that was the starting point of Fox Academy because I was like, listen, we have the background, we have the know-how, let's do it ourselves. So that was now about eight years ago, eight years ago that we started Fox Academy from a one, one of summer camp, one week, 25 kids, great. Now we have grown to an international academy with locations in, in England, in Austria, and, and in the US. And the grow, growth has been exceptional uh, in the US, especially over the last year. Uh, the way we grew was, was, was massive. But also the success in the UK, especially, where we have now players driving with Man City, um, we have now signed a player to AFC Wimbledon. So these success stories um, are good to have, uh, but it's also a confirmation of what we are trying to build. Pretty awesome to see for sure. Scott, can you talk a little bit more about the Cat Academy, especially here in the US? I think, I think you guys have 15 boys and girls clubs, is that right? And then uh, also a yeah. men's, men's team in the uh, UPSL? Yeah, so we have 15 teams. As, as a club, we've been around for approximately a year. And of course, as you can imagine, the the whole COVID pandemic has been difficult in terms of our, our launch, but despite that, we've done really well. Uh, we've, we have 15 teams and we do have a men's UPSL team. And that has actually really helped in terms of our development for some of our youth, because some of our older youth players have had an opportunity to play uh, with the UPSL team. And that's a great experience for them. And so we'd like to do the same thing with the WPSL where we, we can create some, role models, some senior women role models for our girls who will be inspired to also get out there and, and, and join the club and, and improve themselves and develop. Absolutely. Um, Christian, what led to the decision to establishing the women's senior team and ultimately joining the WPSL? Um, it's exactly what I said before. We, we had good success when we started with the UPSL team. Um, but it's, it's always a desire for us to also cover both, both sides, the men and the women. Um, we, have, we have done this in England already, and it was just a natural transition to also have uh, uh, an established team, a women's team, senior women's team uh, in the US. And uh, there was no doubt for us, or there were no questions asked which, which league we want to join. Um, it should have been a, a, a league with good reputation and we, we came across WPSL. It, like I said, it was never really a debate which, which women's league we want to join. Um, Scott was very, very demanding on that to join the WPSL. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy that we did. Well, we're happy to have you as well. Alex, can you talk about as the, uh, the head coach, what these last few months have been like for you? And, and was that your assistant that we saw sneaking around in the background there a second ago? Definitely, yeah, that was 100% my assistant. Um, he, he does all the behind the scenes work, um, as you can see, likes to be involved with everything. But no, um, the past few months have been great. It's been nothing but positive things from both the support above and the support below from all the other coaches as well. Um, it's kind of been a big team effort to get all the girls in and we have a good strong core um, mixed with a couple uh, younger girls and older girls. So it's a good mix um, between the ages to really have a good strong season. Talk about real, real so, sorry, can I chime yeah, in there? Yeah, I, think, I, think, I, I think Alex just mentioned something very, very important, which, which leads me to what I want to what I want to express is that, yes, we have a good core of more established players, college players, but then we already have some of our players from our academy that that built then the younger, the younger squad, right? So they can then definitely learn from the older ones. And it's you know, for, for our academy players, youth players, it's kind of a, a pathway into grown-up football, adult football, which, um, yeah. which is definitely our philosophy. Um, Christian, you, you touched on this earlier on in, um, when we were talking, 
but in the press release that we announced last uh, in the March, when we announced your expansion team, you mentioned the best um, possible soccer education based on the English Premier League curriculum. Could you go in a little bit more in depth on what exactly that curriculum looks like? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not going into tactics now. <laughs> uh, uh, but see, I'm, I've, I've had a couple of great managers that influenced my game that have made me who I am. And uh, one of them was Thomas Tuchel, who I had at, at Mainz, who then went on to, to be the head coach of, of Dortmund, Paris Saint-Germain, and is now at Chelsea. But the, the person who, who influenced me the very most was, was Brendan Rodgers. Um, and that's what I said at the beginning. Yes, I'm already in the business for a very long time, but over the last three years, I've learned so much from Brendan Rodgers that affected then our curriculum in a, in a big way. So all the good pieces from all these coaches, Thomas Tuchel, Brendan Rodgers, a couple of others in Germany that people might not even know, um, I took them all on board and put them into our curriculum, um, which we are working based upon. And yeah, I mean, see, that's the thing, the development that we had over, over the last two, three years. And I, I need to talk about the UK because we only established Fox Soccer Academy, our academy one year now in the US, but how we developed those players to, to bring them back into the system where they came from um, is phenomenal. And um, we really, making big waves. Scott, what are the, the goals or expectations for the WPSL club for, for this first season? And also looking ahead, is it, is it about winning and, and putting the best team forward? Or is it about really developing players for kind of whatever's, whatever might come for them after the WPSL? I think it's a combination of things. I mean, I, first and foremost, we want to be competitive. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, Unfortunately, we don't know what that looks like at this point, because obviously this is, we're an expansion team, not entirely familiar with the level of competition. I mean, we know it's a high level of competition, but until you actually get on the field and get out there with your players, you, you really never know what you have. So we want to be very competitive and we want to create an opportunity for our younger players to develop. Wonderful. Um, Alex, now I know on the league standpoint, we were very excited to have Fox Soccer Academy join the league for this season. I can imagine the excitement buzzing when you broke that news within the academy. Can you uh, tell us a little bit how how that news, um, the reaction from the academy, and then how the community has responded to it? Definitely. So a, a big thing that the girls side was missing was that pro or that um, adult team. So uh, on our boys side, there are many weekends where we have multiple teams at um, the UPSL games. And I imagine that being very, very similar on our women's side. So there are lots of girls that are looking for extra opportunities to just watch the game. Um, and I think these girls that are playing with us uh, for our inaugural season will be good role models for everybody in the club. Um, outside of just Fox soccer, it's been nothing but great. So a lot of many other teams use um, our complex and they've been nothing but helpful with sending other girls over to tryouts and just being evaluated by the club that don't offer the same opportunities that we do here. So it's been very, very receptive and nothing but good things um, from both the community and the club. That's great to hear, I'm not, not surprised. Uh, Christian, you are, you're the father of an adorable little girl. I saw the pictures of uh, your daughter on Instagram and, and your two boys dressed like Spider-Man. They they're, uh, look like good superheroes as well. But as a girl dad, what does it mean for you to know that there is a league like the WPSL that, that exists for young players to aspire to and, and uh, hope to get to one day and, and be able to keep continuing on in their careers? Well, uh, first of all, I was hoping that I make this this uh, podcast on time because literally two minutes before before we jumped on, my daughter was still awake, so she's sleeping now. <laughs> Thank God that, that worked out well. Um, see, an, an establishment like the WPSL offers a lot of opportunities for players, right? Is it is it exposure to to colleges? Is it exposure for even for professional teams? I mean, the amount of 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 players that, get, that are getting picked up, uh, that are showcasing or being able to showcase themselves on a high level, um, that also then go on to play professional eventually. I think these are all opportunities that, 
that are really good for players. Not not saying that my my girl will ever be a footballer. I'm not so sure about that. Um, but just creating these opportunities uh, is, is a big step and, and very important for us. Development for us is is the main priority. So Scott said very well that yes, we want to be competitive. We want, but our main target is to develop those players. That that could mean that there are pumps in the road, which which is fine. But then how do you look? How do you act up on those bumps? Do you learn from them or do you make the same mistakes again? So being on a level like the WPSL with great competition um, definitely um, offers, offers a great platform for every player. Perfect. Now, Scott, um, for our listeners that aren't aware of the Fox Fox's Sports Foundation, can you go into a little bit of detail and tell us how that foundation was established and what its purpose serves? Sure. We, you know, there's a lot of the, the, uh, the whole issue of pay to play. There are a lot of great soccer players out there uh, who just don't have the financial resources to get into an academy, um, you know, because they can't pay the tuition, but they're, they're, they're skilled players and they can go far. But if they don't have that opportunity, uh, we'll never know about them. And so Fox Soccer Foundation was created to help those players so that uh, people can donate to the Fox Soccer Foundation and in exchange, uh, each of our teams has approximately three scholarship players on there. Um, and that, that scholarship money is coming from the Fox Soccer Foundation. So, so well, it's a great, it's it's a great pathway. Fox, it's the Fox Sports Foundation, but that's okay, Scott. A sp- Fox Sports Foundation, my father. Love it. Um, last question. We'll let you guys go because I know you're you're busy getting ready for the start of the season. But just how excited are you about this your inaugural matchup this weekend, Saturday, five thirty p.m. Eastern versus the uh, Rhode Island Rogues there at your Hudson Sports Complex? How are you guys feeling about it, and uh, what are you looking forward to most? Well, well, for me personally, um, it, 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 there's there's this little tingle, like a little bit of. Uh, being nervous because you not don't know what's really coming up, but excitement to to finally start off the season after yeah a long time of preparation. I think that's what everybody deserves. That's especially what Alex and and Scott deserve because they put a lot of work into it and um, a lot of training sessions by now as well. Um, so I would I would like to give the word to Alex because he is he is the one who's leading this team out. Yeah, Christian couldn't have described it more, um, but any, any better. Um, it's kind of that little bit of nervousness and excitement, um, not only by me, but from all the players as well. They're ready, they're hungry to get out on the field and kind of take the field, take the game um, the way they want to. Um, they're not going to roll over easy just because it's their first season. They're definitely going to put up a fight for the whole 90 minutes and then whatever extra time they need to. So it's definitely going to be a hardworking group and one one force to reckon with on uh, this season. And Alex, I don't want to put too much pressure on you now publicly but you should bear in mind that in our inaugural season with the UP, in the UPSL we claimed the title so there's no pressure at all <laughs> but you know the bar is really high hey, big shoes to fill but I got some big feet so you know <laughs> that's great Scott you get you get the last word well, I think any great athlete will tell you that, that in any game that they go into, there's always some anxiety, and, and we have that now, and and uh, we're looking forward to it. And um, you know, it, it's uh, it's one of those things you just want to get it going. We're, we're not there yet, but we just want to get it going and, and get into the rhythm of things. Awesome. Well, guys, we can't thank you enough for taking the time to uh, talk with us today, uh, Christian. We appreciate you staying up late. And um, thank you so much. We wish you luck in this first season. And uh, maybe we'll get a chance to have you on again later in the season as you're talking about uh, a championship. Thank you both. And thanks again for the opportunity to be on here. I uh, really appreciate that. And uh, we'll hear from each other. Absolutely. Good luck this season. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you.